Susanna Sweet. Um, Your Honor, at this point, her exam would have to stay on. She is here. All right, would you come up with your We're order? doing some more investigation on her case, and um, I'd actually like to... Um, I'd actually like to move her case over one week so I can do a little bit more investigation. Well, let's talk about that. Ms. Sweet, have a seat with your lawyer there. This is a little strange. This is a 2022 case. Susanna Marie Sweet allegedly robbed Michael Dowling of his cash and credit cards which is armed robbery, which is punishable by up to life imprisonment. Count two is a home invasion in the first degree where you went into a house armed with a knife intending to rob Michael Dowling. That is a felony punishable by up to 20 years imprisonment. That warrant was authorized by the prosecutor in December of 2022 and you didn't get arrested until February of 2023. And here we are. Uh, what was listed was unknown. You presently live in Menden? Um, yes, I do. All right. And so the defendant wishes to have, is there a plea offer here, Mr. O'Bear? Yes, her co-defendant waived on account of unarmed robbery. So her offer is the same. Who is the co-defendant? Billy Burks. What investigation do you need to do, Ms. Ives? Well, Your Honor, my client has indicated that she has an alibi and she went, this was not her. Um, so just trying to kind of cut down those specifics so I can provide them to the prosecutor for consideration is my goal. Ms. Sweet, did you move away? You know, I honestly, um, I wasn't anywhere near. Any okay, well, wait, I but, was, I but, was living but, at my mom's in right. Cass County. All right. So how did you come to get arrested? Um, because um, I just got a house in Minden and I had a camper. I have a camper on my property and they thought someone was living in it. But like every two weeks, my daughter would come up and stay a night. So he said that he was checking on that and he, he checked to see if I had a warrant when he when he was coming to talk to me. And that's how he found out. And that's how I found out. Well, you don't seem like much of a flight risk. Um, what's your position regarding that, Mr. O'Bear? I would just ask for the prelim to be left on for next week. Uh, the victim would obviously have to be here to testify. Yes. He had face-to-face -face interaction uh, with someone he identified in the police report as this defendant. So he either will be able to identify her as one of the people who robbed him or he won't. Um, in which case the case wouldn't get found over anyway. Well, one, uh, one problem is there's a risk of bringing Mr. Dowling in and having Susanna Sweet as the only person in the courtroom and say, do you recognize anybody? Yeah. Well, she's already, he already identified her during the investigation. All right. In a lineup or something or? Yeah. I don't not think, a, not a no, full lineup. there was he not a lineup. He looked at pictures of. I can't, I can't and is there a plea talking. offer with Mr. Burks? Yes, on a robbery. Does he implicate this defendant? Uh, I don't know. I haven't handled that case. Well, what I don't want to happen, the motorcycle was registered to the defendant, showed him a photo attached. Well, they only showed him one picture. Um, there are some issues with that. They didn't do a photo lineup. They just said, hey, is this the lady? Um, and your, the motorcycle was sold months prior or at least weeks prior. Okay. Um, All right. Just the person she sold it to never changed the title. Well, I'm going to adjourn. You're going to need to make a motion for some sort of a lineup or photo array or something. Uh, there's no motion by the defense. And so if in the course of things now, they just come in and he would just come in and was that her or not? Um, and, but according to the, I don't, I don't know what Mr. Burke says. 
Uh, if Mr. Burke says, yeah, I was with Susanna Sweet, well, that's certainly probable cause. Um, but if we're going on a lineup with one picture in it, there may be some identification issues. And also, I don't know whether the Mr. Dowling knew her or had reason to know her. Or Which he, would all be sorted out. At a but what I don't want them to do is run into each other in the hallway. But right now, she hasn't filed any motion to quash the identification. Um, and uh, But even if she filed that, we'd still hold a true love where the victim can identify the person who believes was there. Well, not if she asks for a lineup or something. Um, if if she, he comes in and she's the only person here, you recognize anybody. Well, you get a case law on that settled, but that's fine. I don't know that I agree with that. Um, at any rate, there isn't any motion, so you're right. I'm just going to leave it on for prelim for next week. But he gives a not very flattering description of the person. There was also supposedly another witness, Mr. Morningstar. I, I don't know. We'll see. 1 p.m. Defendant can file a motion to suppress identification if you wish. These are dead serious charges. There's a I think a presumptive prison sentence on an armed robbery with a knife. Um, Mr. Dowling has some issues himself, health-wise. Um, all right. Well, for now, it's a serious case. The prosecutor objects to additional adjournment, and uh, we'll leave it on for prelim next Tuesday at 1 o'clock. Uh, you're free to go. Um, I'd like to make some precaution that they not run into each other in the hallway. Um, perhaps you get Mr. Dowling in early and put him in the library. Or something. We used to be able to bring in people through our side door, but that ability was removed. So that was one way to guarantee that victims wouldn't run into. I'm not sure who made that decision, but I don't agree with it. Yeah, we used to do that all the time. Uh, all right, well, let's hope for the best. Um, all right, um, you're free to go. Gregory Cuscard. Uh, Mr. Cuscard is here. Um, at this point, um, he wants to go forward with his exam. Um, there's, we don't have... Um, that right, well, let's bring him up. Mr. Cuscard, would you come forward? How you doing, Your Honor? I'm doing all right. Why don't you have a seat with your lawyer there? I'm doing quite well, in fact. Beautiful day. Great to be alive. <clears throat> Especially when you're old. Uh, you got charged with resisting and obstructing a police officer and operating while intoxicated. That's alleged to have occurred uh, on February the 19th. Because the one charge resisting obstructing is a felony, you're entitled to have a preliminary examination in this matter. Ms. Ives, you indicate they're still waiting for um, <clears throat> blood test results? Yep. But I'll just place on the record, that's a misdemeanor. That's a tag along. Yeah. So that doesn't have to be shown at a preliminary exam anyway. If that's what his concern is, and he wants that show next week, um, there wouldn't even have to be. Well, is there a presented. plea offer? Yeah, there's a misdemeanor offer on the table for attempt RNO and impaired driving. Yeah, speak, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Can I stand up? Or can yeah, I stand if up? you want to. I'm not sure. I might cut you off. We'll see what you want to say, but uh, let's explain what the deal is. You, can uh, I speak first? You just said that I could speak. Yeah, all right. Well, I tend not to plead, sir. Say that again. Well, I don't intend on pleading. Okay. That's fine. That's your absolute right. Uh, okay. Uh, let me... 
you're entitled to have a prelim on the felony case, the uh, misdemeanor drinking driving just goes with it. Such as I do not acquiesce to acquiesce jurisdiction. All right. Acquiesce is what you mean. There we go, but you know what it means. There yes. we go. I know what it means, but you don't. We well, got I, 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 know, I can't pronounce it, but I do All know right. what it means. Well, it means you don't accept jurisdiction, and you can challenge that when you're sitting in the St. Joe County Jail saying, hey, I own jurisdiction. At any rate, you are correct. You don't have to plead to anything. And if you want a preliminary examination, we'll set it for next week. Thank you. And whoever is feeding you this gobbledygook is not a favor. It's not you. gobbledygook because you know what it is and I know what it is. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, all right. So, all right, sir. We'll set this for a prelim next Tuesday. Oh. That would be March uh, 12th. All right, Mr. Cuscard, at that point, the prelim is just a hearing to determine whether there's probable cause to believe that you committed the offense for probable cause that it was you. The matter will then be set to circuit court where Judge Stutzman can deal with your Borgrove Jabberwocky. All right, I'll see you next Tuesday at one o'clock. I'll come back just for that. But you're free to go. You've appeared at your court appearance. You're polite, respectful. I'll see you next Tuesday at one o'clock. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. I'll put here offer as attempt R and O impaired. Yeah, I don't think he was interested in a plea offer, but sometimes people can dumb themselves into a felony conviction. But the case that's before us right now is People versus Ronald Christopher Rainey. That's you, sir? Yes, sir. Mr. Rainey, we've met over the years, but I need to identify you for the record. This is file 24218FY. You're charged with possession of methamphetamine and arson in the third degree. Possession of methamphetamine. I believe this is charged as a habitual. Let me get to this. Is a felony charged as a second or subsequent offense, which is punishable by up to 20 years imprisonment as a fourth habitual offender makes that a life offense. The arson charge is a felony punishable by up to 10 years imprisonment. Mr. Marvin sent me an email a few minutes ago indicating that he would dismiss both of those charges for a plea to use of methamphetamine. Use of methamphetamine is a misdemeanor. It's punishable by up to a year in jail and a fine of up to $1,000. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Oh. This is that house that blew up. Um, all right. Do you understand that if you plead to this charge, you'll be giving up your right to have a trial in front of a judge or jury. There will be no trial. Do you understand that? Yes. If you had a trial, you'd have the right to be represented by an attorney. Ms. Uh, Ives has been appointed to represent you. You could also hire an attorney of your own choosing if you wished. If you had a trial. You'd have a right to have any of the witnesses for or against you subpoenaed to come to court so they could be questioned under oath. You would have the right to take the witness stand yourself and testify on your own behalf. You don't have to because you have a right not to testify. And if you did not wish to testify, the judge or jury could not hold your silence against you. And you have the right to be presumed innocent if and until the state was able to prove your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. To understand? Yes, sir. This is a SWET case. SWET stands for Southwest Enforcement Team, which is a regional Michigan State Police directed uh, investigative unit. And for reasons I don't understand, SWET waits months and months and months to 
submit their cases. Yes. Uh, in September of 2022, were you living in your house on 8th Street and Three Rivers? Yes, sir. And the house blew up. Um, and at that time, did you use or possess some methamphetamine? Yes. All right. Now, you were injured in that explosion, correct? Yes, sir. How long were you in the hospital? Maybe that's why I waited so long. Four days. Well, they didn't submit this for a warrant until February of 2024, a year and a half later, yeah. which I don't completely understand. Mm. All right. What are you doing now? Um, I work at Z-Smart Furniture. I've been there for about two years now. I uh, haven't been in no trouble since. I you mean the rental place? Yes. Uh, in Sturgis? Yes. And I haven't been to jail in six plus years. Right? Well, I was looking at stuff. I kind of separate you from your dad because you got the same name, yeah. but some old stuff is him and the new stuff is you. Um, are you living with your parents on Sunnyfield? Yeah. I'm trying to not live there. I'm saving up money. I've got roughly 1200 bucks trying to find an apartment or something. Well, I'm going to have to get more information. I've been at Z Smart Furniture for going on two and a half years. All right. Very good. I think they actually repaired this house. It's a little house. They tore it down. Did they tore it down? Maybe that's why it's just gone. Knocked it right off the foundation. Was anybody there? No. Well, I'm glad you didn't kill yourself or somebody else. But it sounds like you've been doing all right since then. Yes, sir. If it gave you a drug test today, what would it show? I might I may be dirty. For meth? Maybe. Well, so it's still in the mix, which means maybe I need to look at a probation or something, even though this is a year and a half ago. I'm going to set this for sentence. Yeah, this isn't really an arson, although you burned the house up. It wasn't intentional. Good. Rhonda, are you available on Monday, April 1st? As far as I know, yes. Oh, I'm checking with your lawyer. She's got a lot going on. And yes, Your Honor, I am available right. on Monday, April 1st. For sentence, Monday, April 1. You're not on probation or parole anywhere, are you? No, sir. Did they come arrest you, or they call you up and say, hey, we have a warrant for you? They arrested me, yes. How did they arrest you? Uh, I was at Taco Bell. Uh roughly one in the morning, something like that. And I noticed uh, a state police officer was behind me, went around Taco Bell behind me, and then he parked over next to another state police. And uh, as soon as I pulled off the parking lot, they lit me up, cut me off. And my brakes were kind of bad, so I uh, had to turn into the curb a little bit, and he opened the door and pulled me out of the car. And, like, I had no idea like, what was going well, on. Well, a year and a half later, they do a takedown arrest on something they could have just called you up and had you come turn yeah. yourself in on. But I'm not sure exactly what all this is about, but we'll see if we can sort it out. What time on April 1st, Your Honor? 10.30. Thank you. Mr. Rainey, you'll get another notice, but here's one for you. Okay. I'll see you at that time. Sure. I'm probably going to do a drug test that day. Yes, sir. All right, you're good to go. All right, Mr. Clark, you got charged in a formal complaint that alleges that you embezzled from the Myers store in Three Rivers, that you did convert to your own use gift cards or other property worth less than $200. Embezzlement is the same sort of charge as larceny, but embezzlement has an element of trust that if you just stole the gift cards as a customer, that's one thing. If you're an employee of the store, it converts it into uh, embezzlement. Um, 
So they allege that you took some gift cards and activated them and took them the amount of 175.85. Uh, <clears throat> this happened December 8th, so before Christmas. So the charge, as I said, is a misdemeanor. Uh, you don't, you can plead guilty if you wish to, and I'll accept your plea and we'll talk about what happens next. You can also plead not guilty. I don't take any offense at that. If you wish to plead not guilty, I can appoint an attorney to help you with this and set it for a pretrial with an attorney. Um, what would you like to do? Uh, plead guilty. All right, let me ask you a couple of questions. Anybody threaten you to get you to plead to this? No, sir. Or promise you anything? No, sir. And do you understand that you're going to give up all the rights on that advice of rights sheet that the officer gave you if you plead to this charge? Yes, sir. There won't be any trial. It'll just be over. <clears throat> all right. Did you do that? Did you need some money for Christmas and activate these gift cards? Yes, sir. Um, what was your position at Meyer? I was just a cashier. I don't say just a cashier. I mean, everybody's, I'm glad there's a cashier there when I go in there. But I guess you weren't the boss or that sort of thing. Um, Meyer and Walmart have very good controls um, for this kind of thing. And unfortunately, I assume you lost your job over this. Yes, sir. Did you get a new job? I did indeed, sir. Where do you work now? I work at Applebee's as a fry cook and a um, GU. How long have you been at Applebee's? I want to say for at least a month, a month and a half now. All right. Did you ever work with Tyrone? Tyrone? I do not recall that name, sir. He... He's a guy that was working there. <clears throat> he's got some mental health problems and he sort of went off the map. All right, what did you do with the money from the cards? I lost the cards, sir. So I didn't get any benefit. They're out 175.85. Um, so they issued this warrant. And then you got picked up on the warrant, but your family called and asked about it. So you came in, posted a bond. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Did you actually go to jail? Um, they went in there, fingerprinted me, and then they did some paperwork. But you didn't go into a cell? I did not enter a cell, no, sir. If you don't get in any more trouble, you can get this taken off of your record. I would like that very much, sir. Well, people make mistakes. Judge Noecker used to say temptation doesn't shine a big red light saying temptation ahead. Uh, it just happens, although you did this on three separate occasions. So embezzlement is actually worse than theft. It's a violation of a trust position. And you didn't do it once, you did it three separate times, and they have it all on video. Um, anyway, but to your credit, you didn't minimize it, beat around the bush, you just accepted responsibility. Now you're going to have this little millstone around your neck showing that you have an embezzlement conviction, which doesn't put you at the top of the hiring list for your next position. But I'm going to order a $125 fine, $75 crime victim's rights fee, and a $50 state minimum fee, and $176 restitution of wire. $250 plus $176 equals $426. He posts a hundred dollars of bond, so you owe three twenty six. Can you pay that by the end of April? Yes, yes, sir. All right. 
You seem like a nice young man. Uh, what did you do before you worked at mine? Um, I worked uh, at McDonald's and White Pigeon for two years. Laura, I'm out of pay envelopes. All right, as far as I'm concerned, this matter is done, but you're also barred from buyers for one year. You got a ticket. Yes, I did. A white pigeon on mm -hmm. February 24th for driving without a ballot <laughs> operator's license. That's mm -hmm. a pretty common offense. Um, it is a misdemeanor. It's punishable by up to 90 days in jail and a fine of up to $100. Does carry two points. You've got a lot of baggage on your driving record and you don't have one. They didn't charge it with driving suspended. They just charge it with no valid operator's license. That's because I have a permit. And in my defense, I did believe that the person in my passenger seat had a valid license. All right. So that's the issue. So you have a permit. Yes, but sir. You didn't have a driver, a licensed driver with you. Right. I thought the person in my passenger seat did have a valid license. They told me that they had already made their, or they had uh, scheduled their driving test like a week and a half before that. And I don't know what happened if they didn't go or didn't have the money or what, what happened, but they obviously didn't take their driver's test. And so they didn't right, have well, a valid license. A look at this. Temporary permit issued 10, six of 23. So you did have a temporary permit. The only reason I don't have my license is because my car doesn't have a horn. So I can't use it to take my road test. But I'm going to be fixing that in a couple of days. I'm getting a new car. So, well, you've got multiple unpaid tickets. How? Um, and I have a wage assignment set up. So I've been paying on everything. A wage assignment to district court? Um, I have a wage assignment set up to St. Joe County. I know St. Joe County takes money out of my paycheck every well, week. St. Joe County has got different divisions or departments, but you got some, you had some circuit <laughs> court cases with Judge Stutzman. Right. I thought it all got you know, taken out at no, once. you got some of this is I don't care about, but there's a seatbelt ticket from 2019. Oh, geez. There is a... Retail fraud where you owe $2,110. I believe that's what I'm paying on. That may be the wage assignment. Uh, then you have a couple booking fees. You had other no ops in 2022. Now they used to suspend you for having unpaid tickets. Well, I thank um, God that they don't know. Well, the, I, I wish they did, but uh, there's no incentive for people to pay their tickets. So, um, what I think I will do, Mr. You had missed several of the correct dates you were supposed to be here. Yeah, because I uh, look, I've been work, working third shift. I've been working over 100 hours of pay period. Where are you working? Integrity Back and Brain. What's it called? Integrity Back and Brain. What is it? It's um, a medical company that specializes in quadrant and paraplegics. Um, we, I'm a home health aide. I'm working there for seven months. Good for you. I just moved into my own place up in Kalamazoo. Like I've been working my ass off and I'm sorry if, excuse my language. I'm, okay. Well, that sounds like a very difficult job. It is. Um, I think what I need to do is just set this for a white pigeon pretrial. White pigeon doesn't usually come, but if he realizes that you had a permit and what I would like to do is get this other stuff paid off. I don't care so much about the booking fees, but you've got some traffic tickets that are unpaid. Okay. And that permit is good till April, so we're going to have to get. In fact, I would encourage you to go ahead and try to take the driver test. 
Right. I'm going to set this out for a while. I just got to wait until I get my new car and then I'll be all set to go. Um, get one of those ooga horns that hangs out the window. <laughs> so, so. I don't remember having to use the horn in driver's ed. <laughs> no, it's one of the stipulations, uh, one of the requirements. And um, it states that I, I even called several driving um, or several of the places that do the driving tests. And they said, because it's a quote unquote safety issue. And I'm like, are you kidding me? That's the only thing stopping me from getting my license is that freaking horn. You had a license before, didn't you? Never. I've never had a license. Well, it's time to get one. And you, you're not kidding. <laughs> you know, that's the only thing that's like, that's still a hang up for me is, you know, I've already paid off Branch County completely and totally. You're um, an example of someone that made a bunch of bad decisions and is paying the price now, but you're trying to dig yourself out of it. I'm not trying. I am. Well, there's no, you. there's no trying. I just saw a guy that I started to see him when he was 18. <laughs> now he's 58, uh, 40 years worth of bad decisions. Well, I mean, we're looking at 25 or 15. 15. 15. You're yeah. making us both older than we really are. I mean, I feel it every day. First, you made some just minorly dumb decisions, and then you really just stepped on some landmines. You always are a person with a good heart, but I'm pleased to hear that you're doing a lot better. Oh, yeah. I didn't have a choice. Well. I mean, I guess technically I did, but in my eyes, I didn't. It was time. So you're dealing with seriously debilitated patients to care for? Yes. Um, the gentleman I take care of is paralyzed from the waist down. Um, he's still um, rather able and able-bodied, so that helps a lot. Um, but, you know, it's it's honestly what I've done for years, and I just... I've had several patients before I even worked for Integrity. I'm going to set this for April 9. At 8.30. You're killing me, Judge. I'm a third shifter. <laughs> That's all right. Um, this will miss work. All right. I'm going to send you out to the counter. Need to notice and info on unpaid traffic. Okay, and when does that have to be paid by? Well, just make a dent on it. It'd be very helpful. It was paid by the date in question. Okay. I was um, gonna say because I I'm I'm flat busted right now. I'd have to wait until I got my check. Busted flat in Baton Rouge. Waiting Pretty much. For, <laughs> waiting for a train. Feeling there is faded as my jeans. <laughs> All right, you're good to go. Thank uh, you.